It's been a hot minute since I uploaded a video, so hopefully I still know how to do this. What is up, makers? We are back. It's been exactly, well, exactly, roughly about three months since I uploaded my last video. And that is because I, I need a break, mentally, physically. So if you're doing this, you're doing YouTube, do not worry about taking a break. Trust me, it is good for you. Either way, we are back. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix my Anacubic Photon Mono X. Now, it, so it broke and I, I kind of, broke it even more. And what I'm going to attempt to do today is fix it. And three months ago, when this happened to me, I knew I was going to record the process. I just didn't know when. And today is that day. But before we get to that, I need to disclose that this episode is sponsored by My Mini Factory. My Mini Factory are about to launch their Black Friday sale, which will include hundreds of creators with discounts of up to 50% off. Myself included, of course. The sale will run from the 19th November till the end of the 29th November. However, if you sign up with the link in the video description, you will have instant access. Also, while you're there, make sure to check out Tribes where you can support your favorite designers. I'll be there shortly as well. Hey, this is Joe from the future. No, I mean, not from the future future, but future of this video, end of the video, edited and everything, uh, Joe future. Um, keep watching till the end. I do a lot of failures in this video and I do explain them one by one as they happen. So yeah, back to it. So here's what happened. Um, I was printing fine. I actually love this machine. I really, really do. I really like it. And it was working perfectly fine. But then I noticed that I was getting some resin on top of the screen. And I found out that that little smidge of a hole right there was actually leaking resin onto the screen. And needless to say, once the resin seeps through under the vat, it starts getting cured on top of the screen. Now, this screen does not have a screen protector. However, it also does not have like glass right on top of it. It has a polarizing film. I'll get to that in a bit. Either way, I tried scraping off the uh, the cured resin. I ended up damaging the polarizing screen. And now, as you can see, we look right in there. There, it's kind of see-through. It's clear, shouldn't be clear. So yeah, I damaged the polarizing screen. I removed it completely. There's still a bit of Axis uh, glue here or adhesive that was part of it. So I ended up ordering another polarizing screen. Also some um, fat films to replace the one over here. And I should only need these three tools. Now, for those of you who don't know, a polarizing film like this, um, well, I'm not going to pretend that I know exactly what the science is behind it. I'm just going to explain to it in layman's terms, the way I understand it. This is what creates the contrast on the monochrome pixels of the LCD screen. Without this, well, you just see a plain screen full of light. You put this on, at a certain angle, and it creates the contrast needed between blocking the light and letting the light through. I'll show you. Let's do a little experiment. So we're gonna do the detection test, which should bring up a little square in the center. You switch it on, and as you can see, you're really not seeing anything. And we're gonna try to test again. And as it's lighting up, as you can see, you have that square. So this is what creates the contrast. Without this, whatever you try to print will just print a solid surface of resin. That is what filters which pixels are lit, where it's cured and whatnot. The other thing to note is you cannot just slap this on. There's all polarizing films are different. They have a different degree. Um, and what I mean by degree is the degree of rotation it should be on to have the darkest contrast possible. So if we do the test again, and I put this on, I can turn around, starts getting lighter, turn it a bit further, it gets a bit darker. We want to find the darkest shade possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna set the test for 30 seconds until I find exactly the angle I need to get the darkest contrast possible. And to do that, I'm gonna start the test and I'm gonna turn this around like somewhere here is the darkest. If I go further up, starts going light again, go down, starts going light again. So somewhere in between, which is somewhere around there, there, 
That should be the darkest possible. Okay, so that, that was my first mistake. That was not the darkest possible. And I only noticed when I was editing the video. So let's, let's have a look-see. Now if I zoom in here and slowly rotate back, you can see that there is a darker spot, which is there, but I didn't use that. I chose this. So that was mistake number one. Don't worry, there's more. What I'm going to do is grab my Sharpie here and while it's, while I'm holding it in place, I'm just gonna mark corners like that. Mistake number two. I should have marked the corners after I removed the tape holding the screen in place. So ideally what you want, you want to cut the film just before the edge of the screen, leaving maybe one or two millimeters. And I'll explain that in a bit, but yeah. First remove the tape holding the screen in place and then mark the film. Now, before I put the polarizing film on top of the screen, I need to make sure that this is clean. I remove all this gunk here, remove the tape so then I can replace it and then I can stick on the film. See, right there, it actually, this line here, that's where the adhesive was before. Um, so the tape was holding the screen in place and then overlapping slightly, just ever so slightly, onto the, um, the polarized film there. So I should have cut the, uh, the film right up until that edge, but obviously I went way out. Um, if you do buy these, make sure they do have an adhesive side. I didn't know that, um, which is why I kind of figure it out, I'll use the tape, but yeah, they have an adhesive side. As a final touch, I'm just gonna use a microfiber cloth to remove any dust whatsoever, making sure I don't breathe. Mistake number four, five, I, I don't know, I lost count now. The mistake I did here, which I shouldn't know, and I've done this a million times, um, is don't just peel off the adhesive uh, protector um, and then just lay it on, just, remove the film that's protecting the adhesive as you press down the film, just so you won't let any dust um, settle in until you sort of place it on. Uh, as, as you will see, I, um, I didn't do that. So yeah, I ruined that. Still has quite a few air bubbles, but hopefully, hopefully, uh, they won't make that much of a difference. Next, I'm just gonna cover the edges once again as they were. Also, something to point out, that tape I used is, is standard electrical tape. What there is on the screen from the factory seems a lot thinner, um, so that creates a bit of an issue going forward, which you will see, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so even though it is not perfect, there's still like a few little tiny dots of air. Um, I'm still gonna test it out because, well, I have nothing to lose at the moment. And last but not least, this was slightly big one. So, as you can see at this point, down in the corners, there is like a big overlap. That's gonna play a big role in pretty much how the vat settles flush. Well, it can't anymore because of all that. And also I overlapped the tape, which I shouldn't have. It should have been like sort of edge to edge. Uh, also, obviously I covered too much of the screen. So the vat, when it sits on it, it sits on the tape. It doesn't sit on the on the actual screen itself. So yeah. It became very, I mean, I thought it was fine, but yeah, that resulted in quite a few failures. But first, of course, we have to change the fat film.
Beautiful sound. Well, there's only one thing left to do and that is test it. So we'll throw in some resin and well, it's, um, it's resin lapse time. So this is the final result. Minor failures, mainly here, as you can see, right over there. Um, the, um, yeah, the, the, the supports sort of like didn't stick to the build plate. And this gorgeous thing hanging right here. Let me clean this up and I'll explain to you exactly what happened after I recorded all that. Okay, let's talk about what happened. So first and second print failed completely. As I was doing the second print, I realized that the screen was not in the right contrast, which I showed you before while I was editing. So I fixed that. I took all the tape off. I took this screen back off, which is when these two things happen here. It's kind of like delamination of the polarizing film. But then I realized like if, if I tilt it further, then I'm going to be missing some edges. So I, <laughs> I cut a piece of edge here just to stick it on, which is where that line right over there, this line right over here, that's that sheet of gunk that you saw. Anyway, on the third print, um, I, there was still something off. So I decided to recheck and I noticed that I had the overlapping tape and this wasn't actually sitting on the screen. It was sitting on the edges of the tape, which is why it was like these, the, the tape was further in than it should. And this wasn't being actually even, which is why it was failing considerably. So on the final try, the fourth try, I decided to cut the edges here. So have the tape touching the sides rather than overlapping. And this was the result. I mean, the end product looks like for those that print it fine, the result is absolutely perfect. But I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less. It's a very good machine. Um, it's just the maker that operates it that, you know, needs a little bit of, um, practice. Like even the miniatures that printed, printed extremely well. I mean, the detail is absolutely insane. And then we have our guy there, which has like a missing, yeah, he's gone the, uh, the pirate route. This is the carnage that was left from the first, well, three prints. We have the first print here and the second one where there wasn't enough contrast. So it's like a pile of gunk. And then after I adjusted the film, there was this with failed supports everywhere. Um, and that was when the plate wasn't level to the screen. And yeah, um, that was, um, yeah, four failed attempts. But Joe, why don't you just replace the polarizing film that you just replaced, I hear you ask. Well, I only bought one. And the reason why I bought one is because it's like 25 euros and I can only order it through Amazon because no one gets it here in Malta and it's like 15 euros for shipping. Um, but I did order a replacement one last night from Amazon. Um, and all this because I mean, the easiest solution to all this was just get a replacement screen from any, any cubic, but I like it's, it's, I, I don't feel like spending like a, what, 150 euros to replace the screen when I can do this and learn something from it. Well, that's it for today. Um, glad to be back breaking things again, and sometimes making things. I do hope that you've learned something today, like I did. Um, the whole concept of this channel is to show you all the successes and the failures. And there's a very particular reason why breaks um, is in the channel title. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to My Mini Factory for sponsoring this episode. Um, also, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I have some awesome, awesome content coming up. See you guys next time. And as always, happy making.